Russian President Vladimir Putin has made what the Kremlin is calling a surprise visit to occupied Mariupol. Exiled authorities from the Ukrainian city have condemned the trip, which came hours after another unannounced stop in Crimea, which is the peninsula Russia illegally annexed in 2014. Now, that in turn came after an arrest warrant was issued by the International Criminal Court on Friday, accusing Vladimir Putin of war crimes. During the unannounced trip, billed as a working visit by the Kremlin, the Russian leader travelled by car, driving himself, to several districts in Mariupol, chatting with people outside and visiting them in newly built homes. He also received updates about reconstruction works in and around the heavily destroyed city before returning to Russia to meet with his top military commander. The port city of Mariupol had been home to some 450,000 people before the Russian siege. Much of the strategically important city now lays in ruins, including its drama theater, which was hit by a Russian airstrike almost exactly one year ago, killing hundreds of people, many of them children, who had been sheltering inside. It's also home to the Azovstal steelworks, which became emblematic during the siege of Mariupol, a last pocket of Ukrainian resistance that culminated in the surrender of the Ukrainian soldiers. This is the first time Putin is believed to have set foot in the Russian-occupied Ukrainian mainland since Moscow's full-scale invasion last year. It comes a day after he made an unexpected trip to Crimea to mark the ninth anniversary of the Black Sea Peninsula's annexation from Ukraine, a move most of the world has denounced as illegal. In Sevastopol, the largest city in Crimea, Vladimir Putin visited an art school and a children's center, hours after the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant accusing him of bearing personal responsibility for the abduction and unlawful deportation of thousands of children from occupied areas of Ukraine to Russia. We're joined now by our correspondent Nick Connolly in Kyiv. Nick, hi there. Uh, bring us up to speed. What's the reaction from Ukraine to Putin's visit? There's a real sense here in Ukraine that this was Putin's kind of unspoken reaction to Volodymyr Zelensky, Ukraine's president's repeated visit to front lines. You know, there'd been a lot of criticism, especially in Russia, that Putin was you know, most often in safe locations in Moscow, rumoured to be in a bunker lots of the time, keeping away from public occasions, events, let alone not coming to the front lines. And so that this was an attempt to prove that he is not scared, that he feels comfortable. But it didn't really come off, at least it didn't really convince many people here in Ukraine. I guess that was predictable. But the fact that this all happened at night, that his only interaction with locals was a pretty staged kind of event, was with people who had received new housing uh, and all seemed fairly stilted and scripted, that didn't really come across as a man who felt particularly safe or relaxed in Mariupol and you know, didn't really convince anyone that he himself is convinced that Mariupol is going to stay in Russian hands in the long term. Interesting. Now, Nick, there are, of course, symbolic battles in war, places like Stalingrad, Waterloo, maybe even Bakhmut now. What does Mariupol symbolise for Ukrainians? I think this is a city that was at the top of people's consciousness for a long time. It was basically the location of the first major battle of this war. I think lots of people will remember the images of new mothers escaping from a... Uh, from a hospital that had been hit with their new, you know, new babies in their arms, the images of that theatre that was destroyed with people uh, sheltering in its basement. And I think just those kind of aerial shots of a city that basically has been left in ruins. This is a city of almost half a million people and you know, the most kind of conservative estimates say that at most a third, probably more like a quarter of the pre-war population are still there, most have left. That is certainly an image that has kind of seared itself on people's consciousness. And then you had you know, the Azov-style siege, Ukrainian soldiers holding out there for weeks and weeks, coming out emaciated and spending a long time in Russian custody. So this is definitely a city that people's attention is focused on. And more importantly, this was a city that held out in 2014. So even before this current phase of the war, this was a city that was very prominent here. And certainly uh, Putin's visit there is something that people are paying a lot of attention to here.
Nick, we see Putin apparently visiting re rebuilt parts of Mariupol, but it's worth underlining that uh, this was mostly destroyed by massive shelling from his troops. You know, is that irony recognised in Russia at all? I think if you look at most of the statistics, it seems like the majority of the Russian public is trying to pay as little attention as possible to this war. After an initial few weeks of enthusiasm, uh, when it seemed like things were going well, uh, I think people are trying to kind of pay as little attention to this as possible and focus on their private lives. But certainly, I think it's a pattern. We've seen it time and time again in places like Severodonetsk, Lysychansk and the Luhansk region last summer, now in Bakhmut. Basically, after those first few weeks, Russia's army has not been able to make any progress without massive use of artillery with basically kind of scorched earth tactics and they're just not able to, even if they wanted to, to kind of spare and, uh, you know, use precision strikes to attack military targets rather than just levelling everything. So there's certainly a sense that when Russia makes progress on the ground here in Ukraine, that normally mm. involves total destruction and basically you know, impossibility of normal life for the civilians left kind of in the ruins. Nick Connolly in Kyiv there. Nick, thank you. I'm joined now by Mykola Trofimenko, who is the rector of Mariupol University, who fled the Russian occupation and is now living in Kyiv. Welcome to DW. Thank you for your time today. Uh, I'd like to begin by asking you, what does it mean for you, who a resident of Ukrainian Mariupol, to see the Russian leader visiting your city? Actually, uh, the first uh, feeling I had, it was anger. But after um, I remembered the famous uh, theory of uh, famous criminalist Lambrazo, that the criminal uh, is always uh, come back to the crime scene. And uh, it uh, actually was uh, the dream of Putin to uh, capture Mariupol and to create this uh, land corridor to Crimea. And uh, actually, he visited uh, Mariupol by purpose. And they, they've done it. Uh, uh, during the night hours, the, the dark hours of the day, not to capture in the uh, cameras the uh, pictures of destroyed city, because it's a huge crime scene, uh, the whole Mariupol, with uh, thousands of killed people by, by Russians, actually. Mm. What meaning or symbolism does Mariupol have for those Ukrainians currently fighting Russian forces? It's a symbol of resistance. Uh, it's a symbol uh, how Ukrainian uh, city was developing and what Russians uh, have done have done to it, because uh, Mariupol was the most prominent and the most uh, highly developed city uh, before the uh, this phase of full scale invasion from uh, February twenty fourth, and uh, this. Uh, shows what Russians have done to Mariupol, what future uh, have and uh, what future have all the territories they've captured. And they, they don't uh, need actually to, uh, to think about people. They think only about the propaganda pictures because he visited uh, these uh, several, uh, several buildings they built uh, for the propaganda pur purposes. Uh, where they have several people with the new flats and uh, they are showing that they are rebuilding this the city they are they want to develop it and they uh, have the plans to open the airport and uh, the other facilities but uh, it's uh, they are doing this only for prop propaganda reasons and uh, they have uh, a huge budgets that they uh, spent in Mariupol and this uh, um, uh, the, the representatives of the Ministry of Defense of Russia, they are earning money in Mariupol. And uh, they are destroying, destroying the buildings they destroyed, actually. They are cleaning the territory to destroy the, um, the, um, uh, the, what, what they've done to Mariupol, actually, and uh, to destroy uh, the proofs of their crimes. Because... Uh, after Mariupol will be liberated, we will see that the uh, about 100,000 people were killed there. Mm. It's the hugest tragedy, tragedy of the modern era, 